Okay, let's see. What about putting iodine tincture on your skin? So some people do that where they'll put iodine on the skin and if it absorbs rather quickly, um, you know, some doctors look at that as a, as a skin test where a person, they, they would declare a person has iodine deficiency. I don't like that test as much. I don't think it's quite as reliable and it's, and it's, it's, it's actually, there's a lot of room for subjectivity in that. Is urinary iodine loading test the most accurate to test iodine levels? Yes, I think I answered that one um, already. Should I prophylactically take iodine before a CT scan of the abdomen for some protection of radiation? It's not a bad idea. Um, is there a common thread of iodine deficiency with miscarriages? Uh, it can be, yes. Hypothyroidism, fibrocystic breast disease, breast cancer, uterine cancer occurring in a person over the years and doctors never require it checked. Yes, Angie, absolutely. I mean, that would be something I would, I would inquire more in depth about. Can you, so question about organic seaweed and how much to take for daily use. I, I don't know that there's a quantity that you have to take for daily use and, and can you overdo the intake? Probably not going to. Um, you'd have to eat quite a bit to overdose on seaweed. Um, does topical Lugol's iodine have benefits over oral administration? Not really. Iodine as a topical is more of an anti natural antiseptic, antibacterial, antifungal. So where iodine works really well topically, I mean, we use it with our cows uh, before milking them. We dip their teats in iodine solution to prevent any kind of bacteria or other debris from getting, you know, from making its way into the milk. You know, because when cows are being milked by hand, it's not um, it's not quite as clean is those vacuum suctions that they use industrially so you can get kick up of dirt and debris on the, on the cow teats. So iodine dips can help um, prevent stuff like that from creating an issue bacterially with the milk. Um, but as a, as a, on the skin, iodine works well on scra cuts, scrapes, abrasions, things of that nature to try to help prevent infection from setting in. Let's see here. Salt says no iodine. Where do I find salt with iodine? I mean, if you want salt with iodine, you buy regular old fashioned salt at the grocery store, the, the table salt, if you will. It's all fortified with iodine. Uh, but again, that comes with some of its own health issues. So, I mean, that's where, again, where I go with supplementation. Does consuming raw cruciferous vegetables negatively affect the thyroid? It can. Um, you know, you got to get pretty high doses though to really cause a goitrogenic effect with cruciferous. I mean, you got to be like the juicing queen, you know, with the raw stuff. And some people are. So in that case, yeah, it, it, it could be um, problematic. Uh, is there a lab test? I think I answered that one. Can you explain the difference between potassium iodide and nascent iodine and when you would take one versus the other? I'm more of a fan of potassium. I'm at Lugol solution, which is a mixture of iodine and iodide um, over a nascent iodine. Celery tastes really salty. It is known to have, okay, so that was a comment. I see how vital iodine is for the body, but most with Hashis can't tolerate it and it drives their TPO up. Is there a way to add iodine in a better way? I don't see that at all. Um, and I put people on iodine on a regular basis and monitor um, antibodies. So I don't agree with that statement. I think that's part of the issue. I think there's a lot of people out there saying that and I think many of the people that are out there saying that are not actually clinicians um, measuring that. And there's a big difference between saying it and it actually being true. Is iodine antibacterial or antiviral? It is. Um, is iodine a good anti-yeast for candida in the gut? There are better options for candida in the gut, in my, in my opinion, like caprylic acid would be a better option for yeast, um, for yeast overgrowth. Is it safe to take three ultra-nutrient capsules a day? How many are we supposed to take? So Sarah's asking, uh, ultra-nutrients is my multivitamin. So four a day is what I recommend as the actual dosing structure with ultra-nutrients. It's two pills twice a day is, is, um, is for an adult is what I would recommend. 
Uh, let's see here. Let's go down on the left. I used to swim in chlorine so much. Is that what caused the low iodine? Well, it certainly didn't help it. Um, it could, could have been a contributing factor, but it could also have been, uh, it could also have been um, a low diet intake. So what would I give? I would I give iodine to a ten-year-old congenital hypothyroid on levothyroxine since birth? Possibly, Melanie. Uh, but remember, levothyroxine has iodine in it. That the levothyroxine is synthetic T4 preparation, and there's iodine in it. I think what I would recommend is that you you have your son's levels checked to see whether or not it's something that's necessary because iodine has more roles in the body than just thyroid hormone. Yeah, good point, Lane. Um, Lane says, I read that if iodine causes you to detox halides, which we were just talking about, um, you might not feel so well. That, that is true. If you are super overburdened with fluoride or bromine and you're taking higher levels of iodine, you might go through what's known as kind of a detox or herxing response um, for the first you know, week to two weeks. So it is a possibility. Is kelp okay to get iodine? It's okay. It's a great, again, it's a good food source, and you should try to get it from your food as well. Does testicular application of iodine boost testosterone? Not, not anything I've ever seen be effective. Yeah, so, so okay, so the comment earlier about TPO going up when somebody started to take iodine, you could have been, you know, I'm glad you're bringing that back up because you could have actually, depending on how much iodine you were taking, um, you may have been halide detoxing and that may be why your deterioration occurred. Um, but, but as a general rule of thumb, I would look at the dose and see where you, where you fell because it, you know, I, I just don't see that in, in people that have Hashimoto's that, that take supplemental iodine. We just don't see their TPO go up in and of itself on its own as a consequence of iodine. So Mary's asking, I'm very confused. I had my thyroid killed with radioactive iodine. I have since developed an allergy to shellfish. Is iodine safe for me to take in a supplement? Yes. Um, it is safe for you to take. If you have an allergy to shellfish, it's not, again, it's not the same thing. There are other things in shellfish beyond iodine. And even if you don't have a thyroid that's functioning, that, that was radio, um, you know, radio shut down, you can still take iodine. Um, and doesn't mean you're allergic to iodine. Let's see, let's go down on that left. Don't oh, go down a little bit more. Had radiation in 2014 for Graves, had a reaction to it, and I have been so sick since. My TSH at one point was 112. My doctor said my organs were starting to fail. Even after a constant battle of adjusting my tyrosine dose, um, we still cannot get my TSH with a normal steady range. Likes to hang out around eight or so. I've been on two different meds at once because they could not get my levels under control and they only check my vitamin D, which is low at times. TSH, T3, T4, nothing else. I have symptoms of both hyper and hypo. You gotta get a full workup, Amanda. I mean, there are 17 nutrients that are necessary to help regulate your thyroid, whether you're producing it or whether you're taking it medicinally. And so get, you might wanna go back and look at my nutritional show on the thyroid, my crash course, and get educated and then go in and visit your doctor with that knowledge so that you can get better evaluated. So if thyroid is saturated by fluoride instead of by iodine, then you've got to use iodine to push the fluoride out of it. And that's, that's, that sometimes has to be the case. Sometimes you do use higher doses of iodine as a strategy to push the fluoride out. Would organic maca powder be a great natural alternative to boost iodine in the diet? I don't. I, I would say great might be um, an overstatement, but um, not say that it couldn't be helpful. So Diane says, I use Celtic sea salt, live in Wisconsin, do not eat, Wisconsin is part of the goiter belt. Um, 
I have a 2% iodine Lugol solution, but I'm not sure how much to take. Well, I, I, I definitely would, would start off with, with getting in at least, you know, three, 400 micrograms a day. That's not going to hurt you by any stretch, but get your levels checked um, because if you also can't eat eggs, you, you really want to get them checked to see where you stand, how, how low you actually are and whether or not you need, you know, higher doses or not. Is it possible to reverse a shellfish allergy? Not an anaphylactic one. So if you eat it and your lips swell and your throat constricts, probably not going to reverse that. But you know, if you've got a if you've got a um, kind of a milder one, it, it may be possible, just depending. Are there any supplements you would not want to take at the same time as iodine? I would say. Um, you know, charcoal, bentonite clay, anything that acts as a binding agent or a chelator to, to metal, you probably wouldn't want to take it at the same time. But as a general rule, not, not nutrient supplements. Okay, let's see. Keep going. Okay. So how much iodine should I take as a supplement? Again, the, the 12 and a half milligrams a day is super safe um, for most people. But if you're going to do any kind of long-term higher levels of iodine, because 12 and a half milligrams is about 8,000% of the daily dose. So you, you, wanna, um, you probably want to have your levels checked and not just take it indefinitely. But it's a good starting point. But following up with your doc for measurement is always a better place to go with it. Are any supplements? Okay, I answered that one. With thyroid adenoma, is it likely that iodine supplementation will leverage a detox? Anything to look out for? Not necessarily. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't consider a, thy a thyroid adenoma to be problematic with iodine. But again. If you have any concerns about uh, that possibility, check your levels. You can never go wrong with measuring before you supplement. Um, you, can, you can never go wrong in that, in that regard. Okay. Can I add iodine to my soil for my veggie patch? You, you can. You can add it. Um, you certainly can. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, but if you have, I, I would say this, I, you, you certainly can add it. But if you're, well, dep again, it depends on where you live too, Kelly. Um, but if you're, if you're composting your own soil, you know, with healthy plant materials and manure, things like grass clippings and hay, you should have uh, a really nutritionally dense uh, dense soil, unless again you're 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 in a goiter belt somewhere. Any positive negative effects of iodine on gallstones? No. Is a topical application on the wrist a good way of absorbing? You'll get some. I, mean, I like oral better. If I have been diagnosed with hyperthyroid and then Hashimoto's, how often should I conduct a loading test? I think as long as you're going to stay on higher doses of it. If you're if you're taking anywhere, you know, from, you know, especially if you're 20 plus milligrams a day of iodine, you should have a loading test done potentially every three to six months as a as a tool to help you understand whether or not you're getting too much. Okay, I think I covered all the ones I can see. It's all right, we're out of time anyway, so how do you like that? Another Monday down in the book. So uh, before we wrap things up, if you have um, any topics or questions that you'd like to see me cover in the future, don't hesitate to reach out to us at glutenology at gmail.com and forward those on over. We try to serve you the best we can. And so, um, you know, if you've got topic or show topics that you'd like to see in the future, make sure you let us know what those are and we'll do our best if, if they apply to a broad audience to, to get you a good show going. And if it doesn't, we'll try our best to get you a, an answer topic specific. Um, if you're not subscribed to Gluten-Free Society, 
then make sure you head over to glutenfreesociety.org. It's, you know, it's our one way we can prevent censorship. And, um, you know, if you want to make sure you're getting access to the information without censorship, we encourage you to come visit us. Get on our mailing list. We won't, uh, we won't spam you. We won't bombard you with junk, but we'll just give you a bunch of solid information that you can take. And as always, make sure, please, our mission is to save 100 million. So share this information with as many people as you can. Uh, together, we can help more people. How many people tonight could benefit from learning about iodine? How many people have hypothyroidism that have never had their iodine levels checked? That's really the bigger question. There's millions. Uh, thyroid prescription medicine is the number one prescribed drug in the US and nobody's checking iodine or very few are checking iodine. So the more you can get this message out, the more people we can help and together we can hit that 100 million lives saved mark. Thanks so much for your patronage. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you next Monday for another episode of Pick Dr. Osborne's Brain. Hey, if you've got a functional medicine or health question that you'd like me to answer for you, make sure you send me an email, glutenology at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to create a video answer just for you. Have a great day.